this is Ellie. She is gonna be 13 this year. Working towards the PSG, we're not quite there yet, but I'd love to kind of see like your opinion and like where you think we are. Her kind of biggest problem is she can't do one of her changes clean. But so yeah. is it left to right or right to left? It is right to left. It's a little thing. tricky then for mm -hmm. doing the St. George when you gotta put a bunch of changes right, together. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> um. Something else I'd really like to learn is how to get a little more power in her trot. Like, like especially like the mediums and extensions. I think we're still kind of finding our balance a little bit. And a lot of that has to come into, I think, riders' balance and strength. Okay. So I do focus a lot on the mechanics of the rider usually. Sure. But you tell me what you want me to focus on the most because I can make it really hard on you as far as yeah. like putting your body together. <laughs> no, that would then, honestly be good if you could do that. Okay, because I can really poke on you okay. and then it will make her better, but it won't yeah. be a lot about her movements as much maybe today mm -hmm. as much as it would be about having you engage differently and then sit into her better. Maybe. Right, right. So in your position, what is stuff that you work on? Um, my shoulders have always been a big issue for me okay. and just kind of keeping that back. I tend to drop my, or like, I kind of tend to raise my left hand a little bit. Okay, so I'll probably make a few changes to your position that's going to feel like I changed you a mile, probably. And you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> but, so what I see is you get a little hollow in your low back. Uh huh. You get down on the front of your seat bone, uh, sorry, on the front of your pubic bone, a little bit down, and you get a hollow, and then your chest falls back, and then your shoulders round. So, let's go ahead and have you halt somewhere here, and I'm gonna grab probably the mounting block. Um, I really like the leg, the hip, can I touch you? Mm -hmm. From yeah. your hip to your knee to your lower leg is a really good position there. Okay. It's just what I see, so I, you get a little bit yeah. hollow, so front dropped, and then you end up rounding. Right. So you get hollow rounded. So what yeah. we're trying to do is tuck your seat under, chest more forward, okay. and fill in your low back. Um, what I will do is grab the mounting block shortly, but actually stand there for a second. Do you feel both seat bones? Yes. Do you feel one more than the other? Um, the left. Is it heavier or do you just feel more of it? I just feel more of it. Okay. I'm gonna look at you from behind. Yeah, so you look fairly balanced from here. They look like they're both there. Could you snug your right thigh on a little bit more and feel like, could you feel your right seat bone when you snug your right thigh on a little mm -hmm. bit? Yeah, okay. I can. So does it make it more equal? Yes. So maybe you're going along a little bit stronger on the left leg than yeah. the right leg. So you'll want to try to snug the right leg up to be just as equal. Um, and I am of the, the school of thought that I want to keep my thighs always fairly attached to the saddle. Okay. You don't want to be death gripping and you don't want your thighs wobbling. Yeah, that sounds good. So fairly snug. Okay, so what I'm going to do is push on your collarbone. I want you to resist my push. Okay. So as I push here, what's holding you in place already? Think about your muscles. Let me turn this off really quick. Um. Soften. Push. Soften. So. Probably like up here. Yes, I feel core like. section, yeah. right? So this is helping you to stay engaged with the motion of the horse. Mm -hmm. So I want to drop your knee down a little bit and knees turned in to help you keep your hips closed. So I, what I don't want is a, I don't know if I can do it very well here but an open thigh, mm. like you want to keep a straight thigh on the saddle. Okay. So then the knees stays in and then it helps you keep your toes straight. And then from here, I'm going to push in your low back. Resist me. You're already doing it really well. You, you went from hollow, now go hollow again. Yep. And then go more hollow because you were more, go more hollow. So I push, yes. And now less hollow. Push back here. Good. So when I say, like sit on your pockets a little bit. It's mm -hmm. like tuck under and you can feel the low back and so this needs to stay firm. Otherwise you get hollow, right? And we're gonna try yeah. to be less hollow. Okay. Um, it's your go-to is a little bit just, you know. So we're gonna try to make that the go-to is fill in your low back. Now with that low back here, now resist here. Yeah, and now bring your shoulders back just a little bit, but goop, don't, don't lean back. That's right. Resist again, a few more here, yep. And then here, and here you are leaning a little bit forward, but okay. you're like, I feel like I'm leaning, that's <laughs> perfectly straight here. So you, what you need to do is keep, because when your shoulders round, you actually, your, your chest kind of sucks mm -hmm. in. And it's not just about pulling your shoulders back, but it's actually almost more about pushing your chest out and opening up your rib cage a little bit. Okay. To feel like, hey, I need more of the front of my body here 
and then it automatically kind of lines your shoulders up more where you're not just about cranking your shoulders back because okay. you do need to keep the shoulder blades back a little bit but it is I think it's your your chest and your rib cage just sinks in a little bit yeah and you're trying to be more like I think the proud rooster like <clears throat> here I am mm -hmm. um, the eyes turned in yes okay so there might be some things that I say that are like very different from what you've heard or maybe different uh, opposite of what you've heard from somebody else but just try to go with it and see what changes make you feel different okay so actually there's one more thing I wanted to do into your core and this is called what I call bear down it's one of the most important things it's your core strength so can I push on your core mm -hmm. okay so I'm gonna push your, your front and your back and I want you to make a grr sound Yep, can you make more? So can you make this firm out more? There you go. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that is your core strength. Okay. So what have you heard when you hear someone says to engage your core? What do you do? Um, I probably, I just try to straighten and kind of like, I guess, hold my body. I don't know. People just say engage your core, just but they don't really your core, say anything and you're like, well, I don't really know how to do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this is how I want you to think about doing it. It's like okay. you almost, your stomach can do three things. It can hang out, it can suck uh -huh. in, or you can make a wall with your guts and push your guts against that wall. Okay. And like when I pushed in on you and you're trying to go pop me out, that's the firmness that I want you to have. Okay. So if you're unsure, <clears throat> we'll help you to, to engage your core. Just clear your throat a little bit and you go, there it is. So 10 is the max you can do. One is the least you can do. Okay. And your core needs to be stronger than you're holding the reins, and it needs to be stronger than the force of the horse going forwards. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you think about if you're standing on a train or something, you wouldn't relax if the train's yeah. about to go. You'll fall backwards. Same thing. And I don't want you to fall backwards on her back. So here, your upper body is behind your pelvis a little bit, so advance your collarbone a little forward, and you might feel like you're leaning forward a mile. Yes, that's a touch more forward than I want, but keep opening up your rib cage a little bit, almost like I could, if I could cut your rib cage open and do open heart surgery, feel like that. Yes, there you go, super. Because that gets the front of your body more balanced with the back of your body. And what would your bear down number be here? Well, maybe like a three. Okay, and you lost your collarbone a little bit, and yep, exactly, good job. So we're gonna try to go to a four or a five in your core and just really match that power of her walk. And then we're gonna take this to trot rising. When you're ready, careful, keep the rib cage open. Yep. Good. Good, okay. You can stay rising. What's your hold in the rain number? 10 is the max you can hold, one is the least you can hold. Mm, like four. Okay, and your bear down number here? Like three again. Okay, so you're more on your hand than your core, which yeah. makes you suck back and fall back in your upper body. So I want more on your core. And what I would also like to see is the rising become a little more up out of the saddle. Can you thrust higher? Up and over. Yes. Good job. Now, out of 100% of your weight every time you stand up, how much weight's in your thigh and how much is in your stirrup? I would say it's probably all in my stirrup. Okay. Could you make it 50-50? Half, yeah. half thigh, half stirrup. And then with that, keep power rising. I want you to thrust up a little higher again. Up and over, up and over. Yep. There you go. How hard is that? Not hard. Okay. Could you go 60, 40, 60 thigh, 40 stirrup? Have you done a lot of no stirrups work? Um, I've done a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's 100% in the thigh, right? Rising yeah. with no stirrups. So go 80-20, if you can go 80-20, power rise, you're thinking, I wanna to try to keep my stirrup at 20% and keep my thigh near 80%. And you're going up and over, up and over, up and over. Yep, because you get a little bit stuck in a slow trot and yeah. a slow rise, which then makes the trot smaller. So we wanna kind of, actually if you want for a second, I'm gonna give you another explanation of this. Imagine you have a bungee cord wrapped around your waist and it attaches to the back of the saddle and then from there it attaches to the hind legs. Okay. You want to thrust up, actually if you halt again, you want to thrust up and over and pull the hind legs with the bungee cord. So keep your knee in one spot here and stand up to the top of your rise. Yes. You don't get almost half that height when you're doing it normally. Okay. So get up again one more time, up and over, yep, and back down. And you kind of come down where you kind of 
super softly touch the saddle and you power up. And I want a soft sit, but I want you to almost feel like um, that you have to press into the saddle and thrust up again. Mm -hmm. There's a picture that I saw that I heard was almost like your, your seat was a rubber stamp and you're trying to stamp the saddle, thrust up, stamp the saddle. St but you got to get it in the exact same stamp spot each time, right? Yeah. Stamp, thrust, stamp, thrust. And then that you have to, when you're pulling the bungee cord, you can't be heavy in your stirrup. The yeah. goal is to be light in your stirrup and then fairly, fairly powerful in the rise okay. in your thigh. So, rib cage, good job. Bear down number? Um, three. Okay, let's go four, five and get ready for trot. Rib cage. He's just a canter. <laughs> rib cage more and right shoulder a little bit more back. I think you gotta, there you go. Good, up and over, up and over, up and over. A little higher in the, yeah, there you go, there you go. What's the difference you feel here? Oh, she like, she wants to go forward with me. Yeah, is that just because of the rising or is that? I think so, I'm not trying to change anything else. But... Okay, okay. Is that a nice feeling you're getting? Yeah. Okay, keep up and over, advance your collarbone a little bit more, almost point your chest at her, at her neck just a little bit so you don't grow tall and lean forward. Yeah, there you go, there you go. You're just trying to go pull the bungee cord, pull, the bungee cord, you go, hind legs come with me, hind legs come with me. Good job. And then you don't want her to get too fast because you could then slow your rising a little bit. Let's change directions. So you could imagine the bungee cord is more firm and you have to just slowly pull it stronger. Shoulders back. Good. Yep. Okay, shoulders back a little bit more. And then we're going to get that rib cage advanced. Turn them a little bit down and open the rib cage again. Yep. What's the weight on your thigh versus stirrup? Oh, it dropped again. Okay, so we're trying to get more on the thigh. Good. Turn them down. Good. And rib cage. Good job. And we're going to go to walk now for a little bit. And then we'll go to sitting trot after that. Okay. So the, my goal is to get you to be able to take the trot, almost like if your knee is in one spot mm -hmm. and you're trying to, like a, like a windshield wiper. It's attached to the windshield and it wipes. Wipes, wipes. It never gets smaller. It, it can get faster or slower. So it should be harder. I think you're going to work a little harder at that with your muscles when you do it like that. But then you go, okay, I can make the trot more or slower, right? You're trying to be able to quicken or slow it down, but you still get the top of the rise and bottom of the rise. So now we're going to take this from, to sitting trot when you're ready. And we can go, I just want to see a couple circles and then we can go into something. Um, but advance your collarbone. She's like, no, I'd rather canter. That's okay, doesn't matter. So sit on your pockets a little bit more, tuck your seat bones under an open rib cage. There you go. Okay, what's your bear down number? Like five. And you're holding the rain number? Like three. Okay. Good job, this is a good balance. You're still a little hollow in your low back and I would like to see that tucking your seat bones under a little bit more. But when you do that, you have to advance your collarbone and open up your rib cage. Good job. Now. Do you feel like you can take her down a little bit without using a lot of hands? Could you slow her down a smidge? Yeah. Or, okay, good. And then just a little bit forward. She was almost a little motorboating a little bit. Just a touch more relaxed. There you go, good. Bear down, open rib cage more, left shoulder back. Good, there you go. And then you can take, you can go straight somewhere and then take a long side. Let's see a shoulder in to volte to half pass. And I would do like a, maybe just a 10 meter volte is fine. Okay. Rib cage, bear down number. Five. Okay, outside half pump. And just think about balance, 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 balance. You're kind of holding the balance here between your thighs. Good, good. And just go straight now, that's fine. Yeah, we don't have time. So then you're gonna do another shoulder in, do like M to R shoulder in, and then a volte around R, and then you can half pass. Inside lower leg, a touch more forward. Half hold outside, and now gentle volte. A little bit quick. Yep, and then she got the haunches in. Okay, that's fine. You just got a little confused there. No oh, worries. <laughs> no, 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 you're all good. I was just gonna have you do a full volte and then back up to half pass a little bit this way, but oh, you did the half circle, so it's fine. So you're getting, again, as you're going, you're getting more like this and more like that. Yeah. So we're trying to go, oop, and I know it's harder as you do more stuff. So really, you're gonna have to think about really opening up your rib cage, almost extreme, and really tucking your seat bones extreme. That's better. There you go, tuck your seat bones more again. And you might think even 
pubic bone up, like you're going to do an ab crunch, but lift your pelvis up. Half halt, hands a little wide, and low, yep. And now, nice, into it, easy, uh, half pass past us. Left, half halt, left, half halt, supple right, soften, supple right, soften, a little more inside leg into that. Yes. So now walk for a little bit. Keep your elbows at your sides. When you go for half pass right, tell me what you do. Um, let's see, I try to open my right seat bone a little bit, but I think I'm not over enough on that side. On the inside side? Yeah, like I'm kind of dragging her back on the outside. Right, you sit on the outside as you drive a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay. So what I would like to see is that we might end up doing a half pass up the rail. So just basically, basically haunches in up the rail. Mm -hmm. But I want you to s equally sitting on your seat bones and maybe a smidge more on the inside one. And then make sure your inside thigh is just as attached as your outside thigh because you need to give her a place to kind of go into. I like to think about my thighs as like guardrails and she needs to stay between my guardrails. Okay. So if one is off, you know, you're pushing them towards one that's off, but they don't know where to exactly go into. So if you can keep both of them attached. Yeah. And then we can do, the trot can sometimes look a little bit quick. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try, almost imagine you're sitting on a yoga ball and you're trying to bounce, bounce, bounce the yoga, and take the yoga ball with you. Okay. You, you have to hold the yoga ball with your thighs a little bit, you sink down into the yoga ball, and then if you go lean forward, you fall off. If you lean back, you fall off, right? Side yeah. to side, you lean off. So you're trying to keep yourself as much as possible 50-50 on your seat bones, both thighs wrapped around this yoga ball the whole time, and then you kind of need to dictate to her how much she goes up and down and not, not, not just go quick, 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 quick. You're trying to go up, down, up, down a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Have you done like passage and stuff? So you, Not on her, but a little bit. Not on bit, her, yeah. but with different horses, right? You felt it before, how, how the trot then kind of goes more up and down in the air. Yes. There's more air time. And that's kind of how we want to make her trot a little bit more air timey. And she's like, I'd rather just go quicker. Right. And you're trying to go, no, no, let's make it a little bit more cadence in the trot. So then she has to lift and hold a little bit, but that has to come from how you plug into her back and then mm -hmm. almost think about we're bouncing a ball a little bit slower. Okay. And then you can add expression to the slower trot. Fast yeah. is hard to add much to when it's fast. Okay. So let's go, uh, let's just pick up a trot down 20 meter circle once and then we'll go, um, if that trot's fairly good, we'll, we'll take it to a haunches and up the long side. I know. It's easier for her to canter this way. <laughs> That's okay. So, tell me what you're doing in your body here. Just stay on the I'm circle. I'm trying to stay bit. like really centered and kind of bounce a little bit more. Okay. And, and again, when I say bounce more, I, like you know what, I, I don't want you actually bouncing, right? right? But I want you to almost like you can suction her up underneath of you and take her with you more air time. So I want you to plug down more. Down, down, down. You can feel that. And then you half halt, close the thigh, bear down, half halt. Close the thigh, bear down. Yep, advance your collar bone a little bit. And sometimes it might feel a little slow and you need to ride a couple more outside rein half halts, but you can't build cadence without slowing, like relaxing the trot a little bit, taking it down. Too speedy, it's hard to. Yep, and then we slowly build a little bit once you half halt and give her, she sometimes looks like she can get a little bit heavy on you and I, and I yeah, can't. Yeah, she does. Tell. Okay, so when she's getting more than you want in your reins, I want you to bear down a lot, close your thighs a bit, half halt, and then kind of, Yes, half haul her back to the hind end and then you quicken the hind end a little bit, but make sure she comes back first. Yep, because I want you to really make a point to her that she's not allowed to go if she's just getting heavy on you. And that's okay because then she's trying to figure out how can I do this without having to weight the left hind. And I know it's hard. Bear down more. What's your hold on the rain number here? Um, it was, it's light now, but it was heavy before. Okay. So you just keep, if she gets heavy, you're gonna, you gotta close the thigh, you gotta bear down more, tuck your seat bones under a little bit more and advance the collarbone. Yep, yep. Now make sure you're not driving her forward. You're trying to go, wait, 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 now go straight. This is better. Wait, 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 yep, 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 better trot. Good job, good job. What does it feel like to you? Good, she's waiting. Okay, good, keep that waiting. Hold her on your thighs a little bit, hold her in your core a little bit. And wait, 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 wait. And, it, and again, it really has to come from your body because I don't want it to be from having to hold the rein. Yeah, waiting, waiting, waiting with your thighs, with your core, you're kind of going, wait, wait, wait on me. How does that feel? Good. Yeah, this is quite lovely looking. She's got a little more swing in the trot now. Still a little sometimes wanting to be down and a little heavy sometimes, but you keep feeling like she's waiting on your body. 
and you've got to really engage the core probably. What's your bear down number here? Like eight. <laughs> okay, good. That's right, I believe it. So you keep that and you keep the rib cage open a little bit and you keep tucking your seat bones under and you're going, wait, wait, wait on my body. Wait, wait, wait on my body. Yes, good job. And then up the next long side, go haunches in. Keep waiting her though, don't let her speed up. Yep, and that's a touch too slow, but that's okay. I'd almost rather a little slow at first than you can build it. Shoulders back, advance your rib cage, or uh, yep, open rib cage. Good job, supple. She needs a little more flexion right there, and that is gonna come with a little bit of inside leg. She's, again, is she waiting on you? Yes. Circle once, like a 10 meter volte. And then we're gonna go, it's a little bit small, but um, okay, then we're gonna go shoulder in. And maybe you need to circle again, just let her get the sneezes through. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And don't let her run, right? Hold her with your thighs. Yep. Bear down, rib cage open, elbows at your sides. And you got plenty of angle through the body there, but not enough like almost pull flexion. And if that comes a little bit with the inside leg needs to help. And then the left half fall, supple right a little bit. Go shoulder four next time with more pull flexion. So inside lower leg has to help a little bit. Inside thigh has to help a little bit. Is she waiting on you? Yes. Okay. So shoulder four, left half halt, flex right more. Left half halt, flex and soften, flex and soften. Left half halt, flex and soften right. Good, and now see if we can half halt her sitter back a little bit and have her come up a little bit more on the pole. So now soften. And now a little forward, and don't try to pull her up. I want you to bear down in your core and go like, almost like you could lift her up with your thighs. Yeah, slow down. Yep, bear down more. Sit in your pockets more. Yep, that's okay. That's okay. I would rather you stay like that, almost not too big, because then you can kind of focus on the technicalness of it. A little more flexion, half foot left, shoulders, rib cage, bear down. Yep, supple right. Inside leg a little bit more, not for angle, but to almost lift the inside shoulder up, then the inside pull up. Good, one more time, shoulder in. Left half halt. And what's your bear down number? Like six. And you're holding the rain number? Um, lower three. Okay, this is better. This is a better angle here. And then you wanna be able to keep your elbows down and then you can build the trot just a little bit. And you get a little more forward thinking in it, but just don't let her get faster in it. Leg, leg, bear, down. And maybe you give her just a little walk break. Bear down more. Yeah, the sneezes are starting to come through. She's like, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, what does that feel like, like compared to typical or, you know, I just wanna know your feedback a little bit on that. Yeah, I really, really love that. She's like waiting for me off more of my seat only, which okay. is like huge for us. Yep. Um, I'm definitely feeling it in my core a lot. Good. Kind of like the little changes. Yep. Um, I know the shoulder end isn't super like technically accurate, but yep. like I think we're just trying to find the balance of like, oh, this is where I carry myself and this is where I'm yes. like yes. trying to kind of, I don't know. <laughs> yep, you gotta hold yourself, figure that out because this is yeah. a big change. And you still, as you get going, as you focus on her for a little bit, you lose yourself a little bit and then you focus yeah. on you and then you yeah. lose her, right? And so this is the challenge of fixing a, a rider's body is that it I takes know. a while before you just click into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's hard when you're making the horse, trying to make the horse better too, because you're both trying to get better. <laughs> yeah. But you've just got to really just take that, uh, take that power into your body and slowly build on it. And you're going to check in. You, basically, you have to be thinking, what's happening in my body at every second? Mm -hmm. Me, me, her, me, her, mm -hmm. me, her, right? Core, mm -hmm. chest, her, right? Half halt, soften. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to check, check in. And that's the only way you'll really make a big difference is by checking in. Let's go to the left one then. So I would, I'm gonna say, pick up yourself and then pick her up. So, seat bones, collarbone advanced, open up the rib cage and bear down. And you hug your thighs a little bit and yeah. And then you finish that and then you get her where you want her. Is your rib cage open enough? No. There you go. Yep, and then are you hollow backed? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> yep. And then your bear down number. Mm, like three. Okay. So it's fine to match the walk, right? But I just think when you're going for the next gate, you know you're going to need more for it. So yeah. 
all transitions, you need to bear down quite a bit more, especially okay. downward transitions. Okay, gotcha. Because downward transitions are where you would end up, where most people end up pulling more, and mm -hmm. you really don't want to pull. You're going to bear down more and engage your core more so that you can ride your half halt and not have to pull back on your horse. Okay. Rib cage a little bit more? Yes. And you might have to think extreme. What does it make you feel like when you do it like that? Um, it kind of hurts my shoulders a little bit. To open it? Yeah. And I don't doubt it because your shoulders are very used to being right. tight in like the front. Like they're just tight, I think. Mm -hmm. They're very stretched here. in the back and, the, and the, the, your chest is very tight. Yeah. So you're trying to stretch that, but the tight shoulders in the front. Yes, that's quite good. And is it, do you feel like it's more about opening the front or about pulling your shoulders in the back? I like opening in the front more. Yeah, I think it's more effective for you because, I mean, you can pull your shoulders back, but it doesn't open up the rib cage. Right. Yeah, so you keep opening the front up and you have to almost think lean forward sometimes. Okay. There. Like like resist my push on your collarbone when I try to push you backwards. And that's the force of the horse going forward. So now when you're ready, you can take this to trot. Keep your thighs, rib cage, resist my push on your collarbone and match, match, match every step of the trot. And I wouldn't expect it to be like way easy, you know, to do it like this. It should be fairly hard. Good, you're falling behind the motion a little bit and tuck your seat bones under. Do you feel stronger on the front of your pelvis or the back of your pelvis underneath? Probably the front. Yes, and we need you to tuck your seat bones under more and get more of your seat bones on the pelvis. And kind of ignore her for a moment and just go, where, where are your seat bones? And then the challenge with that is you get your seat bones, but then you lean back and you get hollow back. <laughs> so it's like tuck your seat bones under a little bit, advance your collarbone, super. And you're still a little bit down on the front of your pelvis, but we're gonna try to flow with that. And is she heavy on your hands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. So she's pulling you. So grr, make a make a hum <clears throat> sound in your core. Yep. And then half up, push your hands forward a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Imagine you're pushing a grocery cart. Push, push the cart, push the cart. And it, you don't throw the grocery cart away from you when you're pushing one and you don't pull it back to you usually. You just have a little bit of a push forward in your hand so that she doesn't suck back or, or hopefully pull on you downwards. Your core has to match that hand and you're going bear, down, collar, bone, sitting on your pockets, bear, down, collar, bone, push the grocery cart. Yes, and yep, and it's just that smidge little bit of feeling you push forward instead of pull back. And then all of a sudden your horses come up a little bit more. Is it still softer or still heavier? It's softer now. Okay, so go ahead and one more circle and then we'll do, you can do a smaller one if you want to, and we'll go shoulder and left. Don't lose that softness. If you lose it, you're probably pulling and maybe not engaging your core enough. So you're gonna bear down, sit in your pockets, advance your collarbone, and hands push. Good job. That's a pretty trot here. And then you can go shoulder in. Keep, keep bearing down, keep advancing the collarbone. Yep. And she wants to tilt a little bit in the pull. Yeah. That's okay. Just don't, don't make a big deal about that. You just keep pushing the grocery cart. Good job. Rib cage more. Good job. Super. And we'll go another one up the next long side. And really focus on making sure she's not pulling here. And you have the grocery cart hands and you've got the core strength. Shoulders, a rib cage, I should say. Good. Touch more angle on it now and a little more flexion in the pole. Soft and now soften, yes. That's really, really quite good from the front. And then she still wants to twist a little bit here and there, yeah. but you might wanna play with that. You might have to bring your right hand low and wiggle, wiggle your left hand once or twice. And now make sure you're balancing. Hold on to the yoga ball a little bit. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And rib cage more, rib cage more. There you go, there you go, good job. Yep, do you feel both thighs or is one seat bone heavier? Left seat bone's heavier, but. Yes, can you get the right one as yeah. balanced? So snug the right thigh on more. Because you do have a little twist in your body that happens sometimes and you're trying to bring the, Left shoulder back, get the right thigh more on, and right seat bone. Another shoulder in, rib cage more open. Advance your collarbone more, resist my push on your collarbone. Now, left lower leg, right thigh more, right shoulder back. Supple soften your left hand. Yep, are you pushing the grocery cart? Good job, and it, there is a touch less, I feel like there was a little bit less tilting into that one. Yeah. Good, go ahead and walk for a second. Good job. Bear down, yeah, good job. So if you get just more on the inside hand, right. I feel like she just tilts more. Mm -hmm. There's almost a little bit of that, the lower leg has to bring her up, but then the right thigh has to close in on her to go, ah, you can come in. And then you half out the right and you supple the left and she's like a little softer into that, like, oh, I can do that. 
So, you know, typically tilting is a symptom somewhere in the body mm -hmm. that they're not coming through. And, you know, we know clearly know the left hind yes. is tougher. Um, but if we can get her to step on the right hind, then bring the left hind under. So you got to like kind of get your right side more attached to her. Yeah. And then she might be able to step through a little bit better. Okay. Because, you know, both sides of you need to be balanced on top of both sides of her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you never, you, how long has she had this? All her life. <laughs> So have you been riding her for a long time? I've been riding her for almost four years. For four years, okay. Yeah. So there's a good chance that that left hind has given you a few. Uh, no, it definitely is. Cause like I had to learn my changes on her, which is not ideal. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So then you, you've come kind of programmed to right. <laughs> crookedness and some of those mm -hmm. things. And we're gonna, I know it's, it's hard because she, she literally can't do it that well, but you're gonna try to make her do it better. Yeah. So. Um, let's go to a little bit of canter work when you're okay. ready. Yeah. Okay, so really get yourself lined up then. Yep. So I assume this lead canter is better than the other lead? Yes. Okay. So rib cage, more. There you go. And then you lean back. Yep, good job. And now you're going to tuck under your seat bones a little bit more and advance your collarbone a little more forward, almost like you're going to lean forward. Yep. And it's going to feel like you're really leaning forward, but I'm just trying to get you to line up with her. You go. What's this canter feel like? Normal? Uh, it feels a little slow. Yes, I think so. Not too fast though. Don't whiz her forward. I want you to kind of gradually build her forward. Now a little more inside leg, outside shoulder, back. Could you call the beat of the canter to me? Like one, two, three, one, one two, three. three. One, two, 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 three. Yes, good job. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. So we want to collect her on the first beat and have her jump more on the first beat so that she can go forward again, still from the first beat. So you need to advance your collarbone a little bit more, tuck your seat bones under. Good, good. And then you can build the canter now. So one, 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 and build the canter forward now. Good job, try not to let her go hunches in on that. Or okay, shoulders yeah. out, really what happened almost. Yeah. So we're gonna go shoulder four here. And it is easier to do it, hunches in, but outside half fall, outside five, keep it. Which thigh is stronger here? Um, it's okay, left. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yep, so we're gonna snug that right one on. What happens is you end up perpetually a little bit in a yeah. left forward, right seat bone back. And that's fine for the left lead canter, but it's gonna not be fine for the right lead canter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you do wanna be sitting down on the right, but you get the left one more heavy and it's forward, which is gonna, it's probably throwing you there. So yeah. you're almost trying to keep the, I mean, in this lead of canter, it's fine, you can stay but I want you to keep thinking tuck under your left sit bone a little bit and then weighting your right sit bone, right thigh. Trying to lean back. When she pulls on you, you're trying to bear down more. Yes, good job. Now build the counter a little forward out of that. And move forward a little bit. Right sit bone, right thigh. Make sure you're connecting into her right back. Good job, good job. Now a little forward in the counter, thinking a little shoulder forward again. Not just from the inside hand, the inside leg a little more forward, I'm gonna say. Yep, thigh attached though. When you brought it forward, it almost loosened your thigh. Good job, good job. What does this feel like? It feels good. Like okay. it's a little sluggish, I'd say. Like okay. she's moving kind of slowly, but uh -huh. she feels like she's finding her balance. And so, yes, more. so then could you just add a touch, not a lot, a touch of energy, yeah. That's okay, that was just the left hand stumble. Shoulders, rib cage, rib cage more. And bring it, that's okay. Yep, so reorganizing counter again. I know it, she's finding the balance in that. Yeah, exactly. Your left shoulder is definitely kind of really forward, so okay. bring it back a little bit more. Almost point your sternum to her to the middle of her pole. There you go. Good job. Sternum and yes, there you go. So you're not twisting too much to the outside. I would I would Yeah. Yes, there you go. Rib cage. Good job and then build a little bit of jump in the canter by half halting and we're going leg on the first beat. Half halt and leg, half halt and leg, half halt and leg. Yep, it's okay, we got Mr. Wiggles in there. We so. do. <laughs> Good job, half halt and leg. Good job, bear down, advance your collarbone. Good, go ahead and change directions somewhere. You can do a change if you want to or a simple change or whatever. Oh, the pig is there, so he's probably like, no way, left half halt. Okay, just reorganized. And she just kind of was leg yielding too much to the left or drifting too much to the left in that one. 
Yeah, the pig, he's just walking by the hay. He's walking by the shavings now. We'll give him a, give her a chance to leave and then yeah. he'll be good. <laughs> okay, rib cage. Good job. And sit on your pockets. Okay. Do you feel both eyes here? You can yeah. circle if you need to. Yeah. Good girl. Good. Yeah. Good. Good mare. Both seat bones equal? Yes. And which one would it rather be? Is it still the left one? Um, it's like, I think they're pretty equal, but I know I need a little more on the right this way. Yeah. So could you bring your left seat bone more back this way? This is the challenge. Yeah. So you're going to point your collarbone to the outside ear. That's Good. okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's truly terrifying sometimes. But now left seat bone, plug down, down, down. Yep. Rib cage more open, bear down, left seat bone, left seat bone, left seat bone. Yeah. And you might have to shift over to the left a little bit. Get your left thigh up a little bit, left thigh more attached. <laughs> That's okay. Just wait her out, no big deal. You have time to focus on yourself for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> Realign and shoulder Good. rib cage. Good job. Getting a little hollow into your back. So you're gonna, yes, good job, good job. Inside leg a little forward. Outside leg, outside thigh, outside sit bone more down. There you go. That's okay. Because you're going to try, and though it's hard for her, but you've got to plug down into the left seat bone so that she can plug down into the left hind leg a little bit more. There you go. And sternum to the outside. You just circle if you need to somewhere, come off the rail or whatever you can, yeah. Now you're twisting right a little bit, so you're going to bring your collarbone to the outside ear. Left shoulder more back. Left shoulder more back. There you go. And feeling both thighs more equal here? Yeah. Okay. Keep working on that because it's, it's just going to keep shifting a little bit to where you get heavier on the right and the left stays forward. So we're trying to keep the left more back. Bear down number? Uh, I have to be more. <laughs> okay. So engage it. So like four now. Okay. Maybe go to a, a what's, well, what's your hold on the rain number? Like five. So. Okay, so you probably need to be a five or a six into your core. And sternum to the left ear more. I know it's, yep. Twist left. There you go. Yep, because you've got to keep your sternum towards the left outside ear to keep you straighter in your body to help her then stay straight. Now a little more energy in the counter down the long side. You can use that just a bit. Sternum to the left ear, thinking about your rib cage and your seat bones. Yep, there you go. Maybe come across to do a flying change if you want to. Now wait, keep your sternum straight ahead. How tall? Okay, that's the one stride late behind. Yep. And you kind of throw yourself into it a little bit and that might, might be how you were able to get the changes before. But <laughs> she's like, I'm a mare. I know that there was something scary there and I don't forget it. <laughs> Good. Left seat on a little back here, because that's just the position you always want to go into. So it's left is always forward, so you're just trying to get it. Yep, there you go. More equal. Rib cage more open, and bear down a lot, especially when she wants you to hold her a bit when she's worried. Left shoulder back more. Yes. Good. Good job. Good job. And if you want to come across and do another change somewhere, that's fine. Okay. Left shoulder back more. Keep advancing your collarbone. Elbows down. Now shoulder for right, left half halt. Okay, that was a nice change. Little bit of haunches fell left into that though. So what I want you to do is again, another one this way. Shoulder for left, don't change. Okay. So you're gonna go shoulder for counter canter. Yep, now right half halt, right half halt, right half halt. Soften your left hand, right half halt, right half halt, soften your left hand, and don't change. Just counter canter. Yep. Okay, up the next long side, shoulder four. And if you can feel like you can shoulder four, soften the left hand. Oh, uh, that's okay, that's okay. That was her going by herself. Yeah. You might counter canter around again. I know. No worries. So, Bear down, rib cage open, and sit in your pockets. 
So if you can shoulder forward left a little bit firmly and then soften your left hand and then switch your leg somewhere, you can try it. And then you want a half halt right, shoulder forward, soften and change. Okay, walk again. And I don't know if I'll have the exact recipe for that in one day, but um, the feeling that I get is that she almost changes too fast in the front. Yes, exactly. So if we can get her shoulder fouring and then half fault her back enough, and then it's almost like you're going to stop the front, ask for the hind, and the change okay. in the hind. So almost shoulder four, hold the front a little bit and see if you can ask for a change where you go, don't change the front, but just change the hind. But shoulder four a little more firmly. Now half out right. Yep. And that's okay. That was softer behind though. That was different. Yeah. Um, do it again. And now hold the front, hold the left hand a little bit more. And this is firm because you're trying to stop the left front from coming through. Yes, yes. And now stop the left front from coming through and bring the different. It's, it's, what it, what's different about it is it's, it's softer from the hind end. Even though she's still throwing the front look quick, yeah. the left hand's actually coming through more. Okay, good. I think she should be able to have clean changes. I don't see why not. Yeah. It's just, she just almost like she doesn't know how to. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, why don't you try, have you tried it where you tap the left hind mm -hmm. with the whip with, oh, yeah. without doing anything in the front, um, without legs? Yes. And that's like, it works sometimes and sometimes she just gets a little flustered, but right. we can try it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my next kind of step into thinking about it. Don't even ask with the legs. Keep keep your left hind, your left leg back. Mm -hmm. And then you just touch her with the whip once. Not a big one, but like okay. a little touch and see if then you can. And, and, and I want you to be fairly firm with the hand almost because I want you to be like, don't come through the front. Just touch the hind here. Once. Do you still want like a lot of left bend and left shoulder four? Yes. Okay. Right half halt, right half halt. Touch the loop. That's okay. So walk again. Right back to kind of right. Good. Now half halt, firm hold. That's, a, <laughs> that's okay. No worries. Yep. Good job. Just touch the hand. That's okay. She, she's really thinking. And I, what I don't want to do is, is mess it up for you. That's, that was different. Then again, that one was, she, she did a walk into it, but she almost changed at the same. It was very close to the same on that okay. one. Um, but I think a lot of it is just, and, and again, like I said, I only have a, like you know, a little bit of time, so I don't want to be like, and send you off and you've totally messed up your changes. No, it's okay. But, um, <laughs> but it's like she has to learn, and, and not that I want you to be heavy on her, but you have to almost be like, you can't change the front. And um, quite firm with the front sometimes. And she's like, I know, oh, that was different. She hopped behind. Yes, she does uh, hop sometimes. Yep, but that was leg yielder out a little bit more. Like flex left, leg yielder out, leg yielder out. She's so good at doing that one stride behind. Yep. Now left shoulder back more. It's okay. Go back to, just change back to the left. Yep. Yep. And then you might end up just going, just go left lead for a second. Okay. Yep. Shoulders back more. And I know we don't have much more time. We can probably get, she's probably getting a little tired into this, but rib cage. I think part of it might also really stem from your, how you line up on her back. Yeah. So like, you know, it came probably from her, which made you then, which, which kept her that way a little bit. Mm -hmm. So shoulders, rib cage more. And then you're gonna go back to the walk and then we're gonna change directions. So when you're, so actually, if you walk for a second, think yeah. about, have you seen uh, like fencers? who like with foil a tin. Yes. Um, if I'm in fencing lunge position right, it's like this. And that's how my right lead canter should be. Left seat thrown back, mm -hmm. right is in front. I'm a little bit like canter, right? And then when I go for a change, I'm going counter and change. So I switch my hips shift. So you tend to always stay in this position. Yeah. Which would be a little bit left lead counter position. Okay. So coming through, it's like you don't make the shift or the swing of that to allow the left hind to come through sometimes. So there's a, you know, you get a little bit, exactly, you get a little bit hollow under your back and then you get into this left is kind of locked and forward. Okay. So we want to be able to swing it. And not that I want to add a big movement to you because I don't want to all of a sudden have you like swinging a lot, but you need to swing a little bit more into that from right, uh, sorry, from as you're cantering right to go for the left. It's like you got to be able to swing the hip a little bit. Um, 
So I don't know if that makes more sense. They're a little bit how to shift into that. But like think about the fencing lunge position. Outside seat lunge should always be a little bit more back. Stop. Oh, that was a clean change though. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it wasn't what you wanted, <laughs> but you know she could do it. <laughs> okay, so left seat lunge more back here. Right leg more forward. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Now counter flex her here a little bit. Keep her cantering this way. Yeah. It's okay. Back to the right leg canter. No problems. So your goal is to be able to go, can I change you? And now back to right flexion. And back to left flexion. And back to right flexion. And back to left flexion. Keeping your left seat on back. Yeah. Right thigh attached. And now back to right flexion. Try not to move your body too much into that. You're going to sit on your pockets. Left half halt, elbows back, left flexion, right flexion. Good. Now go up the long side, and you might go hold her a little more collected. Good. Left flexion, right half halt, left flexion, and then you're going to swing your hips. I want you to see if you can do a flying change almost like, oh, that's okay. That was just a little bit too quick in the front. Again, back to the right, yep. And I don't know, can you slow down the canter a little bit more? Yeah. And it might get a little sticky, but slow down more, half out right, half out right, half out right, push the hunches over to the left ones. Other way, that's no, okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, okay, no worries. She's like, no way. <laughs> yep. I know. My goal is to kind of get you to thinking shoulder for left and then bring the haunches left and then ask for the change, which may or may not happen. So that was haunches fell right. And yeah. then you ask for the change. So I want the opposite. Yep. So you're going to go shoulder four left, haunches left, half halt right, and then a change with that, which might be hard. No worries, no worries. And maybe just don't do it there. Yep. So shoulder four left. Now half halt right, haunches left. And I, she did something and I didn't quite catch it. Yeah. So that, that might be a train that they, we may be finished with that. Um, yeah, but that's fine. that might be a train of thought to think about. So if you're going okay. canter right, then you go shoulder four left, and now can you get haunches left, and then ask for the change with the haunches going left? Because it's almost backwards of what you might think about doing. Because mm -hmm. you would almost leg yield her off and then ask for the change, which is typical what we would ask for. Right. You know, you flex left, leg yield right, change left. By just like kind of putting like all the pieces on the side where I want it and then... Yeah, we're going, hey, now can I, can I set you up over here? Can I push you over here? And then can I ask for the change, like left hind come through? Okay. Um, it's okay. And that might really rock her boat a little bit, but <laughs> take your time in it and just go, yeah. you know, just go along. I would, I would go into this, move her, move her, move her, don't ask for a change. Move her, move her, move her, then ask for a change as long as she's movable. Okay. And I know she's a little stressed and a little tense, um, yeah. so it's, it's a little harder. But um, I would play with that and touch that a little bit and yeah. see if that maybe opens up a key to something. Um, yeah. Yeah, very good. I mean, and I think uh, and really, again, thinking where are your hips and your seat bones? You know, yes. One's heavier. It's no doubt she's made it that way, but it's going to not help her to get better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then really rib cage, seat bones, pockets under. Yeah. Good. Very good. Any questions? Um, I don't think so. I, I mean, I'll just keep thinking about like trying to kind of fix like the little twist in my body and yeah. staying more on the right a little bit. Yeah. So, probably the biggest it's always thing. hard to fix yourself as much <laughs> on your own horse. <laughs> right. Sometimes it's like sitting on another person's horses and you go, oh, I don't know anything about my horse, so just yeah. fix yourself. <laughs> huh. But um. But yeah, I mean, it's good because you, ha you have a few more things to think about. And I think a lot of core strength, mm -hmm. so rib cage, don't let your rib cage fall mm -hmm. in, core strength, and then sit on under your I'm pockets sitting. a little bit, close your thighs and. Oh, I really like the trot though, especially with that. Like bounce, that was very A little nice. more bouncy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this would be an interesting, this is a very interesting horse. Yes. It'd be fun, to, fun to play with her for a while and see what, how she. Uh, <laughs> We've tried with a lot of different people and right. had a lot of different vets look at her and stuff. And yeah. I think it's just going to be like, I think she has it because she's so nice, but yeah. it's just going to be a process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then does she get more worried? Like, is this kind of typical as you work on it more? Yeah. To get a little more tense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
And even if it doesn't hurt that much anymore, it's probably that built-in pattern that's yeah. like, no, you know, whatever the injury was at one point, everything is stiffer. Right. So she's got the muscle memory there going, no, I can't do it. But it is very interesting how she can bring it through perfectly one stride afterwards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and like her pirouettes are so, so pretty. Yeah. Like she has got those down, but yeah, it's, I think she's, I don't know, maybe just a little confused about what was there, where exactly her left hind is supposed to be doing yes. in the shape. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And uh, I mean, that's just, it is just a process of waiting them out and, and yeah. slowly getting it. I had one of my horses who, when I first started him, he was like, change, 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 change. like on the trails, change, change, change. And uh -huh. I started asking for changes and one stride late, one stride late, always one stride late for like two years. <laughs> and then he oh, finally man. just, he just clicked in and got it one day, but he would never do it when I asked. It was always one stride late, but no problem. Like perfectly one stride late. <laughs> and it just, it just That's takes funny. them a long yeah. time to sometimes just click that.